Mike Zeno Ministries presents Called to Victory. Now here are your hosts, the senior pastors of Glory and Peace Church International, Pastors Mike and Maria Efezino. I want to continue with that which the Lord started to speak to us Sunday last. The word was simple. It was precise. The word was breathe. Breathe. And I shared with us about the fact that when a child is born and moves from the dimension of being in the womb and comes into this realm, that the first thing that a doctor, the nurse, the parents want that child to do is breathe. And partly what they do is they tap on that child and the child breathes and comes into entrance and fulfills that stage. If you don't breathe, you die. The Bible says that the Word of God is inspired or God breathe. So when we talk about breathing, we're talking about receiving the Word of God. We're talking about receiving the Spirit of God. And the Word of God is the Spirit of God. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are what? Life. If you're going to live, you must live by the Word of God. So many people live by the thoughts of other people, the philosophies and the psychologists' uh, renditions of what life should be like, and so they face defeat. Some people live by positive thinking, and as good as that is, it is not the Word of God. Positive thinking is not going to bring you into true fulfillment. I have seen people who have preached and taught positive thinking, and at the end of their life, as positive as they were, they lost out. It seemed to work for a moment. But the one thing that will always work, the one thing that holds everything together, is the Word of God. And when we receive the Word of God, when we believe it, when we speak it, when we take it in, we begin to live the God kind of life. Because that's truly what God wants for every one of us. To live the God kind of life. To have the God kind of faith. We are all growing in the experience. I am, and I know, and I trust that you are. Not one of us has arrived where we should be. Every day I see more things that I know God wants to do and has done that I am not walking in yet. But I'm believing that by the time I take my last breath, that I will live the fullness of what God says. I should be like. Amen? As a testament of his mighty power. And it is not by my might nor power, but by his spirit. But all God is asking me to do is breathe. And I'm going to explain more as we go on on what that word breathing really means to every one of us. Every creature of God that is living, breeds. But it must breathe in the atmosphere that is its habitation. Think about that for a moment. If I take fish out of its natural habitat, which is water, where its true genus is 
manifested and I put it on land without water. It will try to breathe because breathing is natural and all it's going to do is gasp for air. First thing that we need to settle right away is this. It's not enough to breathe. It is important to breathe in your natural habitat. And for us, our natural habitat is in God. Let me state that again. It is in God. When you are not in God, you are dead. You may be physically alive, but you are dead. And there are so many who are dead because they are not receiving the word of God. As a pastor for so many years, I have seen people even die right in church. They died in church while they are hearing the word of God because they have embraced bitterness, strife, unforgiveness, whatever, and have refused to accept the word of God that is coming to them. And right there, they start dying. And their first stage of death is in the arrogance of thinking that they know better. Are you listening? And so the first thing that happens to them is like they feel more spiritual than the one who is presenting the word to them. That is the first sign that you are dying. Have you seen a light go out? A bulb. The last act of light that comes out of that bulb is it is really bright and then it dies. <laughs> when you stop breathing, receiving the word of God, you think you are it. That is the beginning of your death. Because that's when you stop breathing, receiving the word of God, giving out the word of God. And instead of flowing in that grace, you begin to become more into yourself. You don't want to be that. What you always want to be is to have the spirit of humility because when you receive from God, part of your breathing out is your humility before God. Remembering that without him, you can't be anything of importance. That it is God that empowers you to live life to the full. Please hear this. Because as we explore this particular message, we'll become aware of where God really wants us to be. And I believe that the reason why we are still where we are as God's people, emaciated, not thriving as we should, is because we've not believed God. And not believing God is not breathing. You're not receiving the air of his spirit. The breath that he breathed into you. The word that he breathed into you. Because when God breathed into us, it was his word. His word was what was breathed into us. And it is through that word that he created everything that is created and everything that is held. 
is held by the authority and the power of his word. That is important. In the book of Philemon, chapter 1, I'm going to take it up from verse 4 through 6. We need to engage the word of God. I need to. You need to. I don't think God is being difficult. The issue is not God. The issue is you and I. And we need to have that changed. In Philemon 1 and verse 6. I like it on that screen, please. Philemon chapter 1. And verse 4 through 6. Paul is praying. He says, I thank my God, making mention of thee always in my prayers. I thank God every time. I think of you, I am thankful to God as I make mention of you in my prayers. Why is that? Because I've heard of thy love, hearing of thy love and faith. These are two things that are married together. One without the other doesn't work. Faith works by love. Your love for others and your love, your acceptance of the love of God. Amen? If you don't know that God loves you, your faith cannot work because you always think I'm not qualified to ask anything of God. But God says, I loved you while you were yet a sinner. And his love is everlasting love. So if you don't know that God loves you, your faith is useless. Not going to work. He says, but I've heard of your love and I've heard of your faith, which thou hast toward the Lord Jesus, and watch this, and toward all saints. The love and faith that you have towards the Lord and that you have towards all saints, all believers. Do, do, you, do, you, do you understand that when God looks at you, at you today, that God does not look at a sinner, that he looks at a saint? That the description of God concerning you from the day that you got born again is that you're a saint. He never deals with you as a sinner anymore. He deals with you as a saint. Wow. That you don't have to die first and then some pope, you know, sprinkles water over your, <laughs> your bones and says, now you are Saint Zeno. No. I died in Christ, was raised up in Christ, ascended with Christ, I'm seated with Christ in heavenly places in Christ Jesus and I'm declared a saint. You're a saint. We are saints. Hallelujah. Breathe that in and understand I'm a saint. Praise the Lord. And not just I'm a saint, the people I'm with, they are saints. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hearing of thy love and thy faith which thou hast toward the Lord Jesus and toward all saints, that the communication of thy faith, the communication of thy faith, think about that. 
the communication, the kononia, the partnership, the fellowship. That's that word, communication. The kononia of thy faith, the fellowship of thy faith, because you are in unity, you are in agreement, you are believing together for great things that the communication of your faith may become effectual, effective. So it is true then that your faith can be ineffective. When? When you are not working together in unity. It is not about I'm right and you're wrong. It's about we are saints in God. And until you see the other person as a saint and you are respectful of that, you're not going to walk in unity and your faith will not be effective. But how is it effective? It is effective by the acknowledging of every what? Good thing. You're always looking for the bad. You did this and you did that and you said this and you said that and this was not good and this was not nice. Do you look for the good? But there is a good which is in you. The good is in you. Acknowledging of the good that is in you, in Christ Jesus. Acknowledging the good that is in them, in Christ Jesus. He says that's what's going to make your faith effectual effective that we're looking at each other and we're not looking for the bad we're looking for the good that God has accomplished in them and therefore are able to join in agreement towards glorifying God somebody shout hallelujah in 2 Peter chapter 1, we're talking about the natural habitat in which we are supposed to function, where we breathe. In 2 Peter chapter 1, beginning to read from verse 2, but let me take it from verse 1. It says, Simon Peter is servant a doulos, and an apostle of Jesus Christ to them that have obtained what? Like precious faith. We receive the same precious faith. Do you see that? Like precious faith. You didn't receive one kind of faith and I received another inferior kind. We receive the same like Precious. This is precious. That means it needs to be guarded. Needs to be protected. By all means. By what? By the love of God. Have obtained. Like precious faith with us. Through the righteousness of God. And our Savior Jesus Christ. Through the righteousness of God. Through the righteousness of God and our Lord Jesus Christ, we have received this like precious faith. Verse 2. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the what? The knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Grace and peace be multiplied through the knowledge of God and of Jesus Christ. Grace and peace 
be multiplied. Now, what does that mean? It means that grace and peace can be multiplied. And if it can be multiplied, it means that it increases. That you can have more grace and more grace and more peace and more peace and more peace and more grace and more peace and more grace and more peace. And, more peace and, and how? Through the knowledge. Huh? Through the knowledge of God, I'm going to get more grace and more peace? And God says, yes. What is going to happen when I have this increased grace and increased peace? Verse 3 goes on and tells us, that it happens according as his divine power had given unto us all things. Oh, my Lord. His divine power had given to us all things. Everything that pertains unto life and godliness. He had what given unto us. He had what? Given. So if he has given it to me, why am I busy asking him for it? Does that sound like unbelief? That's exactly what it is. It's unbelief. I did not believe what God said. In other words, I did not breathe. If God says, I have it, I have it. And therefore, I can say, I am using what you have given to me to accomplish whatever it is I need to accomplish. Everything that pertains unto life, that is everything that pertains unto you living your life given unto you. Everything that pertains unto godliness, you live in spiritually, given unto you. How? Through ah, again the knowledge. So there's something, something here. That must mean that God wants me to know him. That God wants me to what? Know him. That the reason why I am not operating in the dimension of grace and peace like I should is because I don't know him. Paul, towards the end of his life, says that I may know him. As great as Paul was. Paul was still saying that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. The fellowship of his sufferings, that I may know him. The one thing that we all need is a pursuit to know God. And if we want to know God, then we must be pursuing to know love. Because God is love. Praise the Lord. Then there must be a pursuit to know his word. Because the word is God. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. Nothing was made or created without the word. Is that true or not? Okay, so if I want to know God, I want to know his love for God so loved. God is love and God who is love so loved. I want to know the love of God. I want to know the word of God. I want to know the Father because Jesus says, I came to reveal the Father to you. This is the conduit through which we come into that place where we are operating as we should. A properly calibrated, if you may let me use it in a very uh, molecular way, calibrated, oiled machine. 
properly timed. Not backfiring. Quiet. When an engine is, is running in proper order, you have to listen for it. God wants to bring us into that place of a knowledge of him that had called us. What did he call us to? He called us to glory huh? and virtue. God called you and I to glory and to virtue. How great and amazing is that? When God calls you to glory, he's calling you into a realm by the Spirit where he's calling you to all that he is. Because the doxer of God, the glory of God, is all that God is. The full essence of who God is. Ephesians tells us in chapter 3 that God wants to bring us through this operation of walk in love to that place where we are filled with the fullness of God. What does that mean to me? It means that I cannot afford to see myself as an ordinary person. Next time on Called to Victory. My word is over here. You cannot be relying on the words of that teacher that told you that you're not going to make it in life, that you're a fool, that you're stupid, that you're crazy. You cannot rely on that word. You can rely on my word that says that you are more than a conqueror. That greater is he that is in you than he that's in the world. To receive a CD of today's program, send $10 to Mike Zeno Ministries. Post Office Box 3990, Winnipeg, Manitoba, R2W5H9. To order by Visa or MasterCard, call 204-582-6795. Request the program number on your screen. Thank you for watching Called to Victory with your hosts, Pastors Mike and Maria Afazino. This is a viewer-supported program. Thank you for your financial gifts. Call, write, or follow us online. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, or watch us on our YouTube channel. This has been a Mike Zeno Ministries presentation.